So I'm going to be going over five quick tips to help you win a lot more money when you're playing online poker. Now, I can't promise results, but these are the things that I've worked on and it's helped me excel, especially in the last three to five years. And I think it's going to help you guys out as well. Now, as I'm getting into this topic, I'm going to be breaking down some more hands here in Bovada Poker. And of course, if you guys are looking for some great poker sites and resources, we'll have some links below in the description. All right, so the first thing you got to understand is you always need to be aggressive. And this means when you're playing cash games, you don't want to just limp into pots with small pocket pairs. And this is a big mistake I see players make. Now, whether you're first or second to act and you've got maybe maybe low suited connectors, we'll say like five, six suited or a small pocket pair like fours, five, sixes, you know, you don't want to just limp into the hand. You want to put a raise in. And the reason you want to do that is because you can make a continuation bet on the flop. And if an ace comes, like it's an ace, you know, six, eight board, you could put a continuation bet in. And usually if the guy doesn't have an ace, he's just going to fold. But if you would have just like limped into that hand, he's not going to believe you. So it is very important that you always need to be aggressive. Don't limp into pots, guys. This is something that, you know, I've... uh uh, I had to work on, but just don't do it. Okay, the next thing is you need to understand that you need to bluff in different spots. You can't just play ABC poker, especially as you start to move up in stakes and play better opponents. You know, you need to be bluffing, <clears throat> whether that's, you know, on the flop, on the turn, on the river. Obviously, sometimes a bluff's not going to get through, but as long as you're putting bluffing into your game, you're going to become a better player. Okay. All right. Third, another big one. You need to move up in stakes one level from where you're currently at. So let's say you're playing $100 cash games. Try moving up to the $200 levels. If you're somebody who plays sit and goes or tournaments or whatever, try doing the same thing. But the reason you want to move up in stakes is because you need to challenge yourself. You need to play better players. And if you're not trying you know, to play better players and improve, then you shouldn't be playing at all. You know, Online poker is very competitive. We all want to win and, you know, you need to you need to move up, okay? So just take my word on that. Another nice thing about moving up in stakes is if you can beat the next level from where you're currently at, you can start making a lot more money. Obviously, money is a factor with online poker, so we all want to make as much as possible. Just try moving up one stake. Okay, fourth, you need to three bet a lot in cash games when people are raising you in late position. Now, what's interesting here is this was actually what I talked about in the last video, but three betting is very important because it puts pressure on your opponents when they're raising you in late position with weaker hands, you know, um, and when you three bet, it could be with hands like jack 10, jack 9 suited, queen 9 suited. You don't have to have these really big hands. Um, worst case scenario, somebody calls your three bet and, you know, maybe the flop is really good for you, but... What it allows you to do is protect your blinds, which is very important. And I would say probably like four to five times when you three bet somebody who's raising you in late position, they're going to fold. You're going to get somebody who calls you every once in a while or they have a hand. But, you know, as long as you're doing that consistently, it's going to be a good thing for you. Okay, uh, fifth, if you take a bet, I'm sorry, if you just take a beat in general, don't let it affect you. And if it does, just quit for the day. You know, poker is going to be here tomorrow and the day after that. So you don't have to make a million dollars playing in one day, right? You're trying to make little bits um, and you're trying to improve, outplay people and just get better. That's the whole point of this. So realize you are going to lose some days. It just, that's how it is with poker. And, uh, you know, as long as you accept that fact, you know, I think uh, it'll be really good for you. Of course, if you guys want to comment below about, you know, anything I'm talking about or the hands I'm playing, feel free to do that. And I'm going to recap on each one of these tips shortly, but we got some hands here. We got to, we got to break down a little bit. I put on the, no, yeah, I, I did make the call here. Check this out. I think I tried to bluff us. It was actually a pretty decent bluff, but we had top pair there. So I made the call. All right, next hand with an ace queen. All right, no action on that one. On to the next one. All right, so this is kind of like the money hand of the session, eight, eight, six suited. 
And to be honest with you guys, I was really shocked. Um, and I think when you see what happens in this spot, you're going to be like, wow, like this guy made <clears throat> this play or this call, you know, in a $500 cash game. You got to realize that just because you're playing higher in stakes doesn't always mean the players are better. You know, I've mentioned quite a few times that if you're playing like really small stakes, like micro almost like $25, $50 games, and you move up to the $200 games, you're going to find that the opponents are basically the same, man. I mean, they're really not that different. Now, I will say that when you move up to like the $500 games, competition gets a little bit better, but it's not a whole lot different from 200 to 500 which are really the levels I stick with. But when you start to move to like the $1,000 cash games and above that, the players are really good. I'm not going to lie. Okay, anyways, we have the nut flush draw here. Just looking for you know, a diamond on the turn, but pretty good board because we could still hit an ace on the turn. Um, you know, we got some runner runner weird kind of straight opportunities. So this is actually a really nice flop for us. Obviously it'd be better if the queen wasn't there, but whatever. Okay. So we hit our money card on the turn, really just hoping somebody has a smaller flush, you know, maybe like a, I don't know, like a jack, some kind of like jack five of diamonds would be awesome here. Maybe some weird suited connector diamonds too. I could see like a five, six, four or five type of thing. King jack in this spot would be very unfortunate, but with the flush out there, you'd think that if somebody had king jack and they were going to get like super three or four bet, they probably would just lay it down, honestly. Okay, so we went for a three bet here. I mean, we had to kick the pot up. <clears throat> there was no way we could just make this call. Okay, it's always nice to see that, right? Um, and in this spot, a couple things I could obviously do. We could come over the top again for a bigger amount, or we could just, you know, go for that biscuit play where we just shove. So we went for the biscuit play. Honestly, putting this guy on some kind of flush, definitely like a weaker one. Like I said, a 5-6 or a 4-5 um, could definitely see it. Or a jack, some kind of like weird jack type of, you know, diamond hand, like a jack 5, something a little bit strange. Maybe a jack 8, I guess. If he had a jack 8, that would give him, what, the straight flush draw, which would be pretty sick. But um, you guys are going to be shocked at this because I definitely was. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this at all, especially this call. But it, once again, it kind of like comes back to... <clears throat> um, the players, when you move up in stakes, they're not always the greatest. And I guess this guy could have looked at this like thinking maybe I have a set, maybe like a set of nines or tens and he's ahead. I mean, that's really the only, the only thing. But even then, it's kind of far-fetched. If he doesn't have a flush here, this is really tough. Now, on the opposite side of this, if he has a set, also really tough. I probably wouldn't fold here if I had a set. I'd probably make this call hoping the board pairs, but... I think you're going to be surprised at this. Get ready for it. <laughs> All right, so he was drawing dead. He didn't have a, have a diamond right there. Super, super crazy, guys. Um, but thankfully, he didn't have a set because the board would have paired, which would have been brutal. But, you know, we got a nice, uh, you know, little over a whatever 1x double up we bought in for 500. So in this session, things did go our way. But, you know, like I said, uh, <clears throat> just to recap, too, I mean, you like I said, you always need to be aggressive. You don't want to be limping into pots, even with small pocket pairs or low suited connectors. You want to be opening up. You just need to be aggressive all the time. You also need to understand that you need to bluff in different spots. You can't just play ABC poker all the time. You are going to need to bluff, make some moves. 
You should be moving up in stakes one level from where you're currently at, not just to challenge yourself, but you could also make some more money, which is important. You got to be three betting a lot in cash games when raised by people in late position. And it's so important because they're just trying to steal your blinds. If you play back at them with just mediocre hands, you know, like I said, some jack eight suited, some jack nine suited, some queen ten, some jack tens. Uh, you can protect your blinds, and it puts pressure on your opponents. Worst case, they make a call on you. The flop's pretty decent, and you could still win the hand. And then, you know, lastly, if you take a beat, whether you played it bad or you took a bad beat, just don't let it affect you and just quit for the day. You know, poker, it's so long-term, and that's how you need to look at this. You're not trying to make a million dollars in a day. You're just trying to make little bits Build your bankroll, get some cash outs, move up in stakes, have some fun, guys. It's really about that as well. Okay, anyways, I hope you enjoyed another one here. We had some good hands, I thought. Um, as always, thanks for watching this one, and we'll see you all in the next poker video.